What's going on, everybody? So today I want to talk about African champion in the tech space, social impact space, innovation space as a whole. You know, where are our African champion? What is an African champion, right? If does the government needs to intervene to protect the African champions? What's going on on that ecosystem? This is the topic of today. And why is that important is because the narrative today is that if you're doing business in Africa, you are labeled or you can label yourself an African champion. So all the data that we're pushing um, of how much investment that are going through the ecosystem is falling into the same trap. And, and I, I want to get back a little bit of what this African champion topic is, right? You know, for me, first of all, an African champion is a company that is owned or partially owned by an African. Just, is that simple. Uh, keep it simple, clear. Now, I remember a few years back, for most of you guys will know, if you remember Jumia, um, and Jumia was really growing and, and doing, uh, moving into the public uh, space in, in New York Stock Exchange and being labeled the first African company to be uh, listed on the, uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. That really built up a huge controversy that really blew up on their face at the end, actually, for the company. Because when you looked at Jumia, the whole management, or I would say the whole founding team was non-African. They were French, if I'm not mistaken. All the tech team was in Europe. The only thing that was in Africa is the operation to operate the system, uh, the, 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 the solution or the services. And, and, and yet the, the, the IP and all was hosting outside uh, Africa. And people always think, yo, well, 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 we live in a global economy. Absolutely, we live in a global economy. Even ARED uh, has a holding structure outside Africa. And I'll do a vlog about that in a few, um, in a few weeks. Uh, that, that's a different topic, but there's nothing wrong. But there has to be a component that is African and not just the fact that you're operating in Africa, right? There's a big difference between doing business in Africa and be an African champion, right? You know, there's a lot of company that do business in Africa, but why, let's go back. Why, why is it important, this African uh, champion topic? It's extremely important. It's important for the continent. It's, impo it's important for the next generation to see that there's opportunity. I mean, look, I, every time I watch the news and I don't watch it often, Every time I watch the news, man, I see the migration of people are willing to die. I mean, just just put that in perspective, man. Willing to die to go to Europe or, or outside the continent because they don't see any opportunity on the continent. Their mind are so set to be outside. And, and this is partially a, a, a leadership fault, a government fault. But just the fact that we need African champion. People need to identify with someone to believe that this is where it is. You can call, you can, you can label African champion as what the, 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 the American dream is, for example, right? People fight all the time to go to America because of this American dream notion that at, at some level was was true, uh, you know, uh, people who came from right to riches in America, but it happens everywhere. Truth be told, it happens everywhere. But yet America has been able to, to market that uh, to the mind of, of the world to, to believe that, you know, you can only achieve that in America. But let's go back to the African dream. This African dream is in is extremely important. And I thought with the Jumia uh, story, the, the, the data that is collected on investment, 
So I, I, I'll give you an example. Recently, I saw a document that, you know, OPE is raising, is trying to raise $400 million. OPE, for those who don't know, you can Google them. It's a fintech company based in Nigeria, but now they operate in, in two or three countries in Africa. It's a Chinese company that invested in Africa, in Nigeria, uh, to, um, you know, to dominate, to build a super app, dominate. I actually had the chance to meet some of their management in uh, Lagos. But it's not an African champion company. It's not owned by an African or co-owned by an African. Uh, the, the, the tech team, the whole tech team, servers and everything is in China, right? The investment mostly comes from China or Chinese uh, uh, um, investment. Um, so, but that investment, if happened, even the previous investment OPE done, has been factored in within the investment that the country uh, or the continent has received in a tech space. Fine, but we need to change the label. We need to talk about a total investment coming in Africa from businesses doing business in Africa. And we need to define how many of that investment is getting into the pockets of African champions. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, it's less than 20%. I guarantee you. Now, it, the only space that is really balanced when it comes to investment, is a fintech space. There's quite a few Nigerian companies that are worth, you know, over a billion dollar that receive investment, so on and so forth. But every other sector, deep tech, uh, drone sector, um, uh, which you are, solar, uh, renewable, impact, enterprise, and all those things, we less than five to ten percent. Of the ecosystem but if the data is not defining that aspect then how can we do something about it because the data is misleading right now the data is not really telling the whole story you know and that story that 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 new that that narrative should be toward african champion if you go to asia if you go to the us if you go to europe you got to European champion, you got American champion, you got a you know Asian champion or Chinese champion. But when it comes to Africa, we not getting into the nitty gritty of the of the data, and that's partially the government faults also because you know they're not requiring those aspects of the data. They're just focusing on investment coming in. But should the government do something about it? Should the government develop laws and regulation to protect um, African champion to, to, to be able to compete and, and, and flourish? Absolutely. US has policies to minimize Chinese influence, even though we live in a global economy. Europeans, same thing. Uh, I mean, you don't see uh, a lot of uh, uh, I would say, you know, African champion or African um, companies dominating the unicorn space in Europe or, or in, in the U.S. But yet in Africa, it's different. We, we're not trying to be so tough or, or so, how can I say that? Um, we, we're not trying to be so difficult. We say, no, everybody will be considered in the same spot. But we need, there's a, there's a huge need for African champions to rise in Africa. And I'm going to end with, with this aspect because a lot of the despair, the, 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 yeah, the despair among the youth, because I mentor quite a few number of youth across the continent. Uh, the despair, the, the, the fact they don't believe in this ecosystem, um, the fact they don't see and it's not everybody, obviously, but it's a, a nice sizable of young men and women that just don't believe in this African ecosystem to be able to flourish and all those things. It's one of the reasons, not the whole reason, but one of the reasons is because there's a huge lack of African champion, right? And until we, we, we realize that, and until we pinpoint and stop saying, okay, 
yes, you should be able to come and do business. Anybody should. I don't believe in protective system and all those things. But at the end of the day, something needs to be done, right? You know, we either force partnership like Ethiopia does in, in, to a certain extent. You know, where you, you come in, but you have to partner with a local or you have to do business uh, with a local or there has to be an ecosystem that force you or allow you to uh, do more mergers, you know, or bring you shareholders from Africa. There has to be something because what's happening right now is this, this uh, fourth industrial revolution. We are not participating in it per se we are not we are not you know if if you truly dig deep you realize that we have a long way to go and if we don't wake up then this african chef you will, will just be as we say spectator uh to this uh to this ecosystem and not participant take care